Hey there, darlings. Welcome back to the Farmer's Table. If you're new here, my name is Jess. I'm really glad you're here. And if you're not new here, I'm also glad you're here. I'm hanging out in my kitchen tonight, doing a little bit of meal prepping, I guess, making some staples for my kids' school lunches this week. And I thought I would turn the camera on and say, hey, hang out with you for a little while. Does anybody else feel like kitchen tasks are just exponentially easier to do whenever you have a friend hanging out with you in the kitchen? I know I feel that way. I love it when my husband, Sweet Maya, or one of my boys will come and just pull up a stool in my kitchen while I'm cooking and just chat with me about their day. Uh, I especially like my friend Daniel coming over because he will pull up a chair and play guitar <laughs> while I, I cook. Recently, my little sister and her husband were here visiting. He's also a musician and he just played guitar the whole time. And I'm like, you are welcome to come sit. I will cook you all the things. If you will come and sit in my kitchen and play music for me, yes, I love that. So I'm making a cup of tea for my evening cooking. My timer is going off. I'll show you guys what's going on over there. It's not food. My son Ezra does polymer clay and so I have to bake his little creations. These were actually a couple of different thicknesses, so this was the first one I've got to take it off and then put the others back in. If you cook them too long, they crack, but he's got a couple little things here and this little smiley face pin. I didn't want it to crack. So I am currently starting sandwich bread. Um, I turn the camera on a lot while I'm making this just because I make this a lot. Uh, if you're gonna try not to buy store-bought bread, if you have five kids that are eating school lunches throughout the week, you go through a lot of sandwich bread. I do have a video like detailing out this recipe that I'll put a link to below. So we had our supper club last night. One of these days I'm going to actually record cooking for supper club. We have a group which if you've never heard of doing this, my aunt and uncle had a supper club when I was growing up and I would hear them talk about it and they had like a handful of friends that they rotated monthly hosting dinner for this group of friends and they would go to a different person's house every month and whenever you've got you know four or five families you end up only hosting like maybe two or three times a year which makes it really manageable and then the rest of the time you're just going to somebody else's house you know sometimes we'll like bring things to help or whatever it's just up to whoever's hosting and last night was my night to host i love hosting i'm trying to talk and measure things at the same time that is not my strong suit it's funny i can make videos in the garden doing garden tasks but i guess they're a little bit more mindless whereas when it comes to keeping up keeping count <laughs> forget about it. I have a really hard time talking while I'm keeping out. So hold on one second. I'm going to put the rest of the ingredients in so it can sit and rest and then I'll tell you about supper club. I'm going to try my bread with duck fat today. This may not be a good idea, but we're just going to throw caution to the wind and do it to save myself a little trip of going out to the pantry. I hope I don't regret this. Typically I reserve the duck fat for like roasting potatoes and things like that. I have made bread with lard and melted butter. A lot of times I'll use like avocado oil or coconut oil, but I need to go to the pantry for oils. I noticed it last night and I still haven't done it. I usually use this mixer for um, making butter. I have not, I have made bread products in it before, but I, I mean, it's a great one for bread products, I'm sure. I'm just not used to it, so it's a little different. Okay. Supper club talk. Now I love hosting. I always have since I can remember. Like when I was very young, I remember wanting to host. And a while ago, I haven't listened to this in a long time, but uh, Jeremiah and I did a podcast. We have a podcast, which I started this channel like six months ago, The Farmer's Table. And I've mentioned a couple times where I'll be wearing a t-shirt from my other channel. I have another YouTube channel, uh, but I also have a podcast for that YouTube channel. It's very like homesteading centric, uh, but I talk a lot about food and like loving food and 
I mean, what you see here on this this channel definitely bleeds into that podcast in a big way because it's just food's such a huge part of my life. But we did a podcast a while ago talking about hosting. I'll see if I can find it and link it if you're interested in checking that out. But I was kind of having a laugh at myself yesterday because of just how absolutely excited I was to have Supper Club at my house. And I kind of thought about videoing it, but my son had a sleepover for his birthday and so I had a bunch of nine-year-olds in my house and uh, it's not conducive to making videos at all. I made Berea tacos which I looked at a lot of different recipes so if you never heard of Berea tacos you essentially take like a brisket or chuck roasts and you make this amazing mix of reconstituted peppers and tomatoes and onions and garlic and seasonings and lots of herbs and you slow cook this meat in it for like hours till it's falling apart and then you take tortillas and you dip it in that juice stuff you put them I did them on my blackstone you put them on there with the meat and some cheese flip them over grill them until they're like crispy they were so good but I did that made slaw I did I went all out I had like a drinks menu like everything for supper club it I was kind of pondering yesterday while I was going through all of that because of course like I mean it's a ton of trouble to host it's a ton of trouble to to cook for people but when you love it it's no trouble at all and it was so fulfilling to me I just love getting to do that so if you've never heard of the concept of doing a supper club here's the little you know little birdie in your ear being like hey this is a really fun thing to do and what we typically do with this is it's not just oh I want to have friends over for dinner because we have like friends over for dinner casually but it's really trying to be intentional in hosting our friends well and like planning a menu and planning all the different things and uh, you know sometimes we do it without kids we will do like a kid free one especially when we do like Christmas we'll we'll have specific ones but uh, a lot of our kids are friends and it's just really really special we're actually going camping with our supper club friends and I don't know I remember being a kid a teenager and my aunt and uncle supper club they were friends forever I mean they're still friends with a lot of these people and I remember thinking how cool it is to have dinner with the same group of people monthly for like decades you know I mean that's just an amazing thing so I don't know maybe we'll get that gold star in another 10 years we'll be able to say that we've been keeping it up since then I mean we're on a good run right now we've been doing it for a while I mean it's been I think it's been a couple years I don't know we had to take a little bit of time off last summer from being busy but for the most part I mean we've been we've been getting together for a long while and it's a really big blessing all right got my tea and I've got some chicken breasts here I'm about to start messing with first does anybody have any canning recipes they love for asparagus because I picked this a couple of days ago I've just had it sitting on the counter in some water so if you pick anything from your garden like asparagus or any sort of like kale anything that's like got a stem essentially you can treat it like a cut flower and just stick it in some water and it stays nice and fresh and crisp you can do that with any roots too so if you pick like beets or carrots or radishes just stick them in some water on the counter obviously you don't want to leave them sitting there for too long or you can put them in water in the fridge that's even better but i didn't have any space in my fridge for this big container um i have this many more asparagus out there right now though so like quite a bit and I was gonna cook this last night even though it totally didn't go with my dinner theme but they're so huge like these these are some monster asparaguses and there's some more out there that are even bigger than this like there's one out there that's like this big around I have no clue uh, but I was thinking I might try to do like I, I might can them I don't know I've never canned asparagus before so I could easily like Google a recipe and try to find something but if you have something that you recommend because you've actually used it before and liked it please leave a comment down below because I could use some direction on what to do with these things like this look at this thing this I think is an indicator that my soil is good I'm pretty sure that's what's going on here I'm pretty bummed about it so I got some chicken breasts here I'm just about to trim them a little bit and cut them into strips and I'll oil and season them and I'm gonna cook them out on the Blackstone I have five kids and they, we pack lunches every day 
with school lunches, I try to mix it up some. A lot of times they take leftovers. And with that being the case, a lot of times when I'm cooking, I'll actually intentionally cook way more than we need so that we have leftovers for school lunch. But my oldest son is 18 and he does weightlifting and bodybuilding. I think, I think I'm allowed to call it that. Sometimes I'll say something he's like, mom, that's not what it is. So <laughs> he, he goes to the gym a lot. He's got big muscles. <laughs> sure that's embarrassing to say too but uh i cook things like chicken breasts for him and then sometimes the little boys will be like i want to eat what jackson's eating in which case they'll take it so this will he'll take you know chicken breasts and rice and then i'll probably saute some sort of veggies or something i've got a lot of cabbages coming in from the garden right now as well as broccolis and um cauliflowers and so a lot of that i can just roast or saute so I never really know what I'm gonna talk about whenever I turn the camera on to do just like a chatty video. Um, I do love turning the camera on and chatting because I think it helps me get through my tasks, but I get so much feedback from people who are like, hey, I put you on while I'm washing the dishes or while I'm cooking dinner. And I just love the idea of being able to keep people company. I'm, I'm doing my to-do list and if I can keep you company while you do yours, that's really precious to me. You know, I was talking about hosting and I love hosting, but I take it back from that. And one of the reasons why I was really just filled with joy yesterday is that I really love food. It's funny, I had thought about it today. I'm like, man, I worked really hard yesterday and it was so fulfilling and so enjoyable. And what is it about that to me that is so fulfilling and so enjoyable? And I just, I love being able to create something. Food has the capacity to be such an art form. I remember a time in my life where I was on a really limited budget, but I really wanted to be able to cook. And I was honestly kind of struggling because let's say like these chicken strips, what I, what I would have done before I had the skill set that I do now to be able to cook and before I had the understanding was really a lot of it. I would have gone to the store and I would have purchased chicken tenders that were already cut that way. And I would have purchased one of those bags that had a marinade in it. Um, hopefully it would have been on sale because full price, I would have just skipped it and I would have just not cooked chicken tenders that week. And it, I look back on that now, I think, man, I was spending so much more money than I had to for my end product to really, a lot of times, not even be as good. Now, I had a couple of comments recently on some videos because sometimes I'll throw phrases around and I'll, honestly I'll say things like garbage ingredients or um, bad oils or things like that and and that always gets a little contested and I do understand where that kickback is coming from because I think that we have a tendency to see anything or anything that we perceive as like aggressive language or accusatory language and be a little defensive towards it and I understand where people come from when they're like, hey, don't call food bad. Lots of people don't have access to food. Let's not call it poison. Let's not call it garbage. Let's not call it that stuff. I've even had is people have issues with me talking about real food before and they're like, hey, what is this fake food? And I will not go into my whole soapbox spiel about that because frankly, it's evening. I'm enjoying hot tea and I don't feel like being on a soapbox right now, but my issue is not with people who are buying um, what I consider to be inferior ingredients. Left the drawer open. Um, my issue is not that. My issue is that corporations who are looking to increase their profit margins are using highly chemically processed ingredients that are cheaper for them that they still sell a lot of times for very high prices and the individuals that don't know better are buying things based on labeling and marketing without understanding the negative effects of those foods on their bodies on their family's bodies on their children's bodies and especially during a time that a lot of people are really struggling uh, to make ends meet and pay for food in the grocery store i 
I do feel a little bit of, I do get a little sassy. I mean, I'll own it. I get a little sassy at the food industry um, and, and what I feel like it is doing to benefit off the ignorance of people. It's not even a little sassy. I get outraged. <laughs> I'm like ridiculously outraged about it. I'm gonna go wash my hands before I touch something with my chicken fingers. <laughs> So the reason why I'm kind of like brazen and being like, hey, here's how to make mayo so you don't have to buy mayo at the store and pay outrageous amounts for it to have healthful oils in it or to save the money by garbage oils. Here, let me just show you how to make it at home. Like, I do call it garbage. Now, I it is a kind of fine line to walk because I don't want anybody to feel bad about what they can afford, but my hope is, is to be able to empower people to be like, hey, you, you don't have to be as limited as the grocery store tells you you have to be. For instance, if you're buying that bag of marinade, like look at the ingredients. I love this question, okay? When I go in the grocery store, anything that I look at, I like to think, what would it take to make that? Could I make that? Could I make that at home? And when you simply ask that question, there are things you're gonna come to that you're like, mm, it's not really worth it. Like for instance, I don't, as a habit, make ketchup. Now, there is a really good fermented ketchup recipe I learned from a friend of mine. I'll share that with you guys. Occasionally, I'll make it. My kids are a little picky. They're not big on it. I like it a lot. Um, so that's one thing that I purchase, and I, and I do pay a little bit more to have a product that is higher quality and doesn't have like high fructose corn syrup in it. I don't want any highly processed ingredients in our food. I like to keep it as natural as possible. And I'm not, like I'm not a crazy stickler about this. Like my kids are at a baseball game tonight. I am sure they will eat stuff there that I do not approve of. It's fine. It's completely okay. We're looking at moderation. We're looking at mostly eating nourishing food and I want it to mostly taste good and I want it to be as, you know, economical as possible. I'll get to chatting and I will miss my bread window. I gotta put oil on this. We're gonna do, this is some Tuscan herb olive oil. I am going to coat these chicken tendies with it. Oh, and you know what else would be good? Let me put a little bit of this duck fat on there. I'm not gonna do a lot because I just put olive oil on it. Just a little. Let's do garlic powder. Not measuring, don't need to. What's that meme say? Just shake it until the voices of your ancestors say, that's enough, my child. This is a seasoning my mother buys, um, and I have she, I don't know where she gets it, but it's a smoked Marconi pepper seasoning, and it's so good. I want to make this. I want to smoke some peppers. I have smoked peppers in the past to make seasonings, but I definitely want to do this. Paprika, not a ton because I did just put that other smoked pepper on. A little black pepper, salt, dried Italian herbs. <coughs> I breathed in that pepper. All right, let me show you guys this. Here we go. Just gonna mix this around and make sure that it's nice and coated. Oh, and you know what I forgot? I forgot acid, hold on. Let's put a little bit of lemon juice in this. All right, so that's gonna go in the fridge for just, I don't know, a couple hours. Um, I'll cook it before, like, before I'm done working for the evening. I'm gonna cook that on my Blackstone and just put it on there until it's cooked, move it around. Uh, you could bake it in the oven, you could cook it in a pan, and it would be probably best to marinate that longer. Uh, another really good thing to marinate with is buttermilk and mix on like oil and seasonings and all that in. And then if you wanna do kinda of like what those bags are, usually those those marinade bags, there's like, I remember like there was like a Jack Daniels one and then they started to make like the store brand ones. And a lot of times what those are, are based with like sugar and soy sauce. I mean, you can do all kinds of things. You can do it in a Ziploc bag, but marinades are one of those things that are so affordable to just make, which takes me back to the question that I like to ask, which is, can I make that? 
and I was kind of joking yesterday I was laughing with my friends because I had gone and run some errands and stuff and there was one ingredient that I was missing for my burrito tacos which was some like good Mexican melty cheese and I got to the store and I'm carrying this cheese to the front and I start thinking, I'm like, oh, you know what? I bet I could make something like this out of goat's milk because I'm constantly asking, could I make this? What would it take to make this? Is this worth making from scratch? And I finally was like, buy the dang cheese, Jess. Just buy the dang cheese. It's three hours before your guests come over and you need to clean the living room. Like, <laughs> sometimes I have to rein myself in to just be like, stop it. <laughs> just buy the cheese, which, you know, that's, I think it's finding the balance, you know, like finding the balance between being able to make things. And for me, that's what keeps like the real food journey a joy. I, I do get outraged at the, at the state of things. I do get outraged that I feel like people are getting fleeced in the grocery store for a lot of things that they just don't realize how easy they are to make. And that's my hope is to be able to show th people, hey, look, like you don't have to buy all the little oatmeals and packages. Like making oatmeal on the stove is really fast. It's, it's not that much more trouble than instant oatmeal. It tastes so much better. It's so much cheaper. And you can then make sure that there aren't added ingredients going in your breakfast that you don't want. The big thing is, is for a lot of people, they just don't realize. All right, I'm gonna keep count here. Can't talk in town. All right, I think we're good. I don't actually use this mixer because I usually use my KitchenAid. It's just what I'm used to. Um, I usually just use this one for like making butter and like whipping things because I like the way that it has a lid. I did this with whole wheat flour this time. I don't normally, it's a little different. I'm gonna have to knead this on the counter. I hate making a mess. I have this, I guess, you have like a dream version of yourself. I don't know if that's the right language to use. It's not really a dream version of myself. An idealistic version of yourself might be the best way to say it. And in my idealistic version of myself, I don't need the grocery store. Which as it is, I don't need the grocery store a lot. But I do need it a little. And I do go, I mean for things that are preference. Like me melty Mexican cheese. I could have just used my my um, farmer goat cheese, which I use for a lot of things, but I was trying to really nail it with these tacos. So, you know, there are things where I just go and say, just buy the cheese. It does fuel me a little bit when I go to the store to think about not needing it. And honestly, the more I ask myself the question of, could I make that? It's really, given me a, a real sense of like the possibility of that freedom because there are so many things that I used to just buy and I it was kind of mindlessly or it was out of habit or it, it wasn't that I like deeply wanted something it wasn't that I was making an exception it was just sort of the path of least resistance that I was in which I think that's so easy to do with food I think a lot of times we're tired we're completely overwhelmed. We're just exhausted as far as decision fatigue goes. I mean, I don't know about you, but especially if you're running a household, you have a family, and you're not just having to make your own food decisions, you're having to make like a lot of people's food decisions, and then you're having to go against the kickback, like you're making their food decisions for them, and then they're complaining about the decisions that you're making. It wears a mama down. And then on top of that, you're trying to budget. So you're not just making food decisions, you're making financial decisions. And it can be absolutely exhausting. Which, this is different. This is a really dense, we'll see. I, this is a different flour than what I normally use. I usually just make this bread with just like all purpose flour. It's like an organic white flour. I am gonna start grinding my own grains. I did it forever ago. I never have had a like an actual mill. I always just use my Vitamix and I know that's just a whole nother another animal as far as making things. All right I'm gonna set these over here to rise. And 
clean up my mess. I will tell you though, with some years of doing this under my belt, embracing a relaxed approach, and it doesn't have to be black and white, we don't have to be extreme here, using really honest language, like, I'm gonna keep saying real food, I'm gonna keep saying garbage ingredients, I say it with compassion for the people who feel stuck, and I hope to offer solution. But to me, honest language exposes dishonest things. And I think a lot of what happens in the food in the grocery store is dishonest. A lot of things that happen on food labels is dishonest. But with all of that being the case, like for me now, having some time under my belt as far as cooking, it gets so much easier. And so that's why I just really encourage people to just master the one thing, just the little things. I, I, I love teaching people to bake bread because I think that it is so empowering because for so many people they just don't realize how simple it can be how you can just build that in as a habit um, and then you don't have to buy it anymore and that's one one thing and then the mayonnaise and then the salad dressing and then the marinade and you start checking these things off your list and your grocery budget is going further because you're not paying somebody else to bake your breads and mix your salad dressings and mix your marinades for you you're doing it yourself and you realize, oh, I could buy more food with the same amount of money if I do this part myself. And it's okay if you're juggling a job in a family and you can't do all the things. That's completely okay. Like, it, it's okay if your budget is small and you're having to make some compromises. But I think that by calling things what they are, it gives us the opportunity to make the compromises in an educated way. Like for instance, I mean, I'm here baking bread and, and cooking chicken for lunch and mixing the marinades. And as I said, my kids are at a baseball game. Um, I guarantee corn dogs will be consumed this evening or nachos or something. And the cheese is probably gonna be closer to plastic than it is real cheese. And it's fine, like it's fine because the majority of what they eat is good. And I prefer a laid back approach where we don't make anything taboo. I'm not trying to create forbidden fruit out of Skittles in my kid's life but I do want to teach them overall, you're eating this and it does this, you're eating that and it does that. Here's the optimum way that we wanna fuel our body. Here's the optimum way we wanna spend our dollars. Here's, you know, the general standard of things. And let's just try to stick to a line of mostly real food that mostly tastes good. And it, it, to me, it makes it just way more plausible. I mean, like being on a public platform, I've been doing this for so long now that Anything I do, somebody's gonna pipe in and be like, ah, here's what's wrong with that. Like, anything. It doesn't matter. It literally does not matter. I can share anything and somebody is gonna come and tell me what's wrong with it. And so what that ultimately does, which I love this, I turn 40 next year and it makes me feel free as a bird because like, I am finally getting to the place in my life that I realize like, oh man, that's a you issue. Like some people are trying to be helpful. Some people are trying to be ugly when it's ugly. That's a them issue, it's not about me. Like I'm doing the best I can and I'm confident in what I'm doing. And it is completely okay if it's not somebody else's standard of perfect. It's not my standard of perfect. I'm not aspiring for perfect. I'm aspiring for my best that's mostly good enough. So anyway, I, I know this is rambly, which is how it is when you're hanging out with a friend in their kitchen. We're just chatting over baking bread. If you're on this journey, like, Ask yourself, can I make that? Is it worth my time to make that? But I am, don't, don't kill yourself over an unobtainable standard. Just do the best that you can. And I, I think that asking questions all the time kind of leads us to new ways to do the best that we can. And then having grace for ourselves whenever we maybe fall short of our own goals. And definitely have grace for yourself when you fall short of other people's standards because frankly, you should not be aiming for those in the first place. I think this is probably getting pretty good and long, so I will say farewell to you and finish up my kitchen chores. Hopefully my bread turns out pretty well. I think it will. I've made this bread a jillion times. This is my first time with this flour, but I bet it'll be okay. Thank you for hanging out with me today and all the days that you do. I bless you. Until next time. <laughs>